You may wish to watch the previous two videos in the playlist that are also on slicing in the Python programming language. This is another one that's going to look at some other examples of slicing strings in Python. Let's consider this computer program here. And if we look to the first line, what we can see is this is actually going to produce a string. As you can see, I have shown in this um, schematic diagram here. Now the next line is going to look at this particular string and it's going to slice it. And if we look at this position, we can see that that's a 10 and it will select the index position of 10 in the alphabet string. Now if we look here, there is no number. And if you remember from the previous videos, if there is no number here, it means it's going to point to the last position of the string, which is here. Consequently, the actual slice we will take is shown here. It goes from KLM all the way up to Z. Now here you can see we have two print statements. The first print statement will print out all of the string, and this line will print out the slice string which in fact is stored here after this has executed. So when we see the runtime of the program, we can see that this is the entire string being printed and this is the slice being printed. And we can see the slice is exactly as predicted by the schematic animation. Before we have a look at another example of slicing in Python, I want to introduce you to two things that we're going to be using in a later program. Let's have a look at this. If I say, let's take 26 and divide it by 2, then we know 2 is going to go into 26 13 times. It's going to go in exactly, and it's going to be no remainder. Another way of writing this out is to say 26 divided by 2 equals 13.0. In other words, in Python, we can store 13 in an integer, or we can actually decide that we're going to store 13 as 13.0 in a different data type. Now, this isn't about data types. This is just simply looking at divisions. If we go on a little bit further and consider this one here, 25 divided by 2, well, 2 goes into 25 12 times and a remainder of 1. If we continue with this idea, 25 divided by 2, we can write out as 12 and a half. So there's nothing unusual here. This is just simply arithmetic. If we continue, however, and have a look at Python, it has something called floor division. And these two symbols here, these two forward slashes, will perform a floor division. If you see this, this is 26 divided by 2. In other words, how many times does 2 go into 26? And the answer is going to be 13. If we have a look at this one, this is 25 floor division by 2. Now we know this is 12 and a half, or it goes in 12 times. Now what floor division will do, it'll return the answer of 12. It's as if it's thrown the decimal bit away, the 0.5 away. Now floor division is something we're going to be using in a moment in one of our computer programs. If we now go on to remind ourselves of something we've done earlier in the playlist, and that's the length function. Here you can see I've got an alphabet string that goes all the way from A to Z, including all the uppercase letters that appear in the English alphabet. Now if I use the len function, what it'll do, it'll tell us how many characters are in this particular string, and it'll return 26, as you can see. Now, if we have a look at another example, be careful, it's not the same alphabet string, because if you look in this region, we've got rid of the Z. So, in other words, this isn't the full uppercase collection that belongs to the English alphabet. It's got the Z missing. Consequently, if I now take the length of this, then it's not going to be 26, obviously. It's going to be 25. Now, we will use this function and the floor division in the programs that are coming up. Okay, now let's look at a computer program. And this is a Python program here, and we know the first line is going to produce a string, and this is the schematic representation of that string. Now the second line of the program is actually going to take a slice of this string. And if we look at the entries for this slice, we have this one, which is the length of the alphabet, 
that string floor division by two now we've already know this is going to give us 13 because we've discussed this a moment ago so that's pointing to where we're going to take our slice from now here with there's no number and we should know now that if there's no number in this position it's going to point to the end of the string consequently this will be the slice that's taken if we let the program now execute as shown here we can see that when we printed the slice which appears here in the output we can see that that is as predicted by the schematic diagram now this is the same program with a slight amendment and the amendment has appeared here the z has been removed consequently this string is only 25 characters long so the actual look of the string will be as shown in this schematic diagram here and you can see it goes up to position 24 where we have the y in other words there's no z here so there's no 25th position there's no 25 representing the index position of z because z isn't here if we now take a slice of this we know this is going to pick out the 12 now why the 12 well because the length of the string is 25 25 floor division by 2 is 12 now if we did a normal division here we would have got 12.5 now 12.5 is not anything that appears in the index of the string that's why we've used floor division to ensure we get a whole number back to enable us to choose one of the index positions of this particular string obviously here there's no number so that will mean points to the end of the string and on this occasion the end of the string is the y the position 24 as dictated by the index position consequently the slice we will take is this one here and you can see the slice goes from m all the way up to y now previously it went from n up to z what we've done here we've altered the string slightly and we can see the effect and we hopefully can see why a floor division is being used and of course when we run the output this is what we get when we print the slice string which you can see matches the schematic animation and just to repeat we used the floor division so we didn't get any fractions in the answer because if you look at the index positions there's no fractions there is it they go from 0 to 1 to 2 all the way up to 24 let's now consider this computer program it's very similar to the one we've just been looking at but if you look at the first line you can see I've reinstated the Z in the string consequently shown in the schematic diagram we can see we go from A all the way up to Z which is from position index 0 all the way up to position index 25 now here in the slice that we're taking there is no number now that means we start at the beginning of the string so we start here at position index 0 character capital A now of course here we can see we're taking the length of the alphabet string and floor dividing that by 2 now that's going to give us 13 now this means we don't go as far as 13 consequently what this is actually pointing to in this case is the 12 so the slice we take goes from the beginning to the 12th index position so we take from a all the way through to m so when the program runs we can see this is the slice that's printed therefore that's the slice that was taken and we can see that this corresponds to what the schematic diagram was predicting okay let's have a look at another computer program this one here and of course we're going to get the alphabet string again and what we're now going to see when we take the slice is we have this here and what this is going to do it's going to take the length of the alphabet string and floor divide that by four which will return six and of course this will now point to the start position of the slice if we now come here what we're now doing we're taking the length of the alphabet string and floor dividing that by two that's going to return 13 and this will mean we won't go as far as the 13 what in fact this bit of the slice notation is selecting is the 12 consequently the slice we take is this when we then run the program we can see that the output here which is the print of the slice string is as predicted by the schematic diagram i.e. it goes from g through to m as shown in the schematic diagram 
Let's now consider this computer program here. And if you look at the first line, you can see that I've cut down the length of the string. I've gone from A to M. So what this will look like in the schematic diagram is shown here. You can see that the string goes from capital A through to capital M from index position 0 to index position 12. Now the length of this string is therefore 13 because remember it starts at 0. So here when we do this, we're taking the length of the alphabet string, which we know is 13, and we're floor dividing that by 4. Now that will give us 3, because 4 goes into 13 three times and there's a remainder of 1. Remember, we get rid of that remainder, we're not interested in the fractional bits. Consequently, this will point to the start of the slice, this index position here. Now if we come over here, we're taking the length of the alphabet string, which we know is 13, we're floor dividing that by 2, and the result we will get is 6. Now that means we don't go as far as the 6. Consequently, this entry in the slice notation is responsible for selecting the end of the slice, which is index position 5. So the slice we take is D, E, F. Consequently, when we now look at the output, we can see that the output is D, E, F. That's the slice we took and we can see that it matches what we predicted from the schematic diagram. What this video has hopefully shown, it's possible to take slices of the string based on the length of the string, because often we don't know what the length of the string is going to be, because we might have read it from a file, for example, and we don't know what the contents of the file is. So using floor division in the way in which we've used it in this video, we can choose whether we're going to take the half of the string from the beginning to the middle, from the middle to the end, and it doesn't matter how long the string is because we can find its length using the length function. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.